No, uh, Coach Fossil is about to come up right here. <laughs> hey, everybody. Hey, All right, doing good. John, I always start off with a block pump, wide jump side, to go for it, Ben, and uh, how'd you think it turned out? Yeah, it turned out really good. We um, we went for it because that was kind of the one we went into the game with saying this is the one we want to we want to call, and the situation actually worked out pretty good. It was you know fourth and short, and they were in their punt team on late, and it was kind of our bread and butter call, if you will, for that game. So it was a pretty calculated shot. It you know we feel good about this, and we kind of knew what we were going to attack. And for Giff, I was so happy for him. I mean, a guy that just didn't hesitate and just said, I'm going for it. And super proud of him for being aggressive and going for it. I think they said on the broadcast that maybe you all had already seen a look that kind of set that up. Had you seen a look already in the game, or was it more just between? Uh, I think that was our, their, their first point of the game. But you know, we, we deep dive into all the film You know, from obviously this season. We look at every snap of the previous season. Um, we feel that all our shots are pretty calculated. Nothing is just random. Let's just see what happens here. Nothing's really reckless. And we felt like, you know, we we were lined up. We had good gap control. We were rushing it from every gap. And it wasn't a really complex deal. But um, the guys were really just in tune with making sure we lined up on side, stayed on side, a fourth and short. You know, the, the snapper is really good at trying to head bob and get you to jump off sides or lean into the neutral zone. So there was a lot happening kind of um, under undercover that made it go. And uh, it was good. It was, it was really fun for our guys to make a play like that in a, a great game. I mean, I'm a huge fan like probably all you guys are. And just what a great football game. Great football game. For you personally, though, knowing like Bill Belichick and how much emphasis he puts on his special teams. Does it get executing a play like that against his special teams? Does that mean any any more to you at all, personally? No, no. Mm -mm. I mean, we know that you know Coach Belichick always has a, a really really good special teams unit, and they do this year too. But um, it doesn't mean any more than if it was another game, than if it was Carolina or New York or Philly or any other team we played. Yep. So we get more reps. And uh, CD on returns, punt returns, and if that was the case, why, why more settled than CD in those situations? It was still a buddy system football. Um, a couple of them were inside the 50 punts. The set usually goes back there, and you know he likes to fair catch that. Um, CD was back there for the one that we blocked. So anytime we, we rush it, we also try to return it. We feel like we can get a good shot at that too. So um, I really like I talked about a couple weeks ago. Just honestly, just let those guys just buddy system it. Whoever's like feeling they got the hot hand or um, they got a little bit more endurance or gas in the tank at that time, then they just take it. Lose it, or you know, in terms of his head, or it was in his hands. Yeah, it was in his hands, and it was kind of a unique one because most of the time in that field position, you don't really return the football. But we did a pretty good job of blocking the outside guys, and so it was a unique one for Seth. Well, like his mindset was, I'm going to fair catch it, but he felt like I got a shot maybe to return this, and then the guy kind of jumped on him pretty quick. So it was more on the catch, more than like getting stripped or anything like that. And then you know he was sharp enough to jump back on it. Nation Wright and said ended up getting it. Uh, but he wanted he wanted to go with it, and I told him in the meeting this morning. I respect the fact that you guys want to compete. You know, we got to be smart. You know, but we, I respect the fact that you guys want to compete, and I don't ever want to take that away from you. With Greg's 51 yarder, was it the way he hit it, or what, what, what went wrong with that, and why did you still have the confidence in him on the 49 yard? Yeah, the 51 yarder. He, I asked him this morning and last night, obviously, and he just said he just mishit it. He said when he when he hit it. it it didn't hit the right spot on his foot, which is why it pulled and kind of helicopter spun. Um, and then right after that, he came off the sideline. And he was in a great frame of mind. And I said, you know how this goes. <laughs> Be ready for another one here in a couple minutes. And sure enough, it happened. And the confidence that I have is just from the experience I have with him. We've been through those before where you know he, he might miss one. And you say, hey, it's, it's a long game. Or you know, we're going to get a stop. Be ready in a couple minutes to go, go hit a bigger one. Um, and he always does it. He always does it when, you know, when it's a normal kick, you can count on him. But when it's the critical kick, I always feel like he's going to make it. Does a kicker out of his peripheral vision see the guy coming in like that guy almost could have blocked it, I thought, if he kicked it with his normal swing? Yeah. It's a great, great question. I asked him, and he said that he said no, but I think. 
the kicker sometimes feel that. Because we had one against the Chargers, I think, where C.J. Goodwin almost got it. And their kicker pulled the, the one he, I think he held off the upright maybe for the Chargers. Um, and I think kickers feel that a little bit. And that guy that New England had number 29 is really good at it. And so we, we ID'd him all game as a guy that we have to block. But he's still so good at it, sometimes it's hard to get him. And um, whether or not the kicker says it, there might be a, um, something that they do feel that makes him just kind of pull it away a little bit from that guy. And sometimes that equates to a miss. Yeah. Bigger picture question for you. The, the number of punts is down pretty significantly, particularly this year. I think it may have been declining for a year or two before. Why do you think that is? I think it's the amount of times teams are going for it on fourth down. Yeah. I th and that's not a fact. I think just, you know, the amount of times that teams are going for it on fourth down, I think, has got to be way up. I don't have numbers on that. But that probably is why the, the amount of punts are down. So logic would say that maybe analytics are the reason because analytics are telling teams when to go for it on fourth yeah. down more. What do you think? I would say so. The teams are going for it more on fourth down. Maybe kickers have a little bit better range where instead of the ball at the 40, maybe you'd punt it, you'd hit a 58-yard field goal. So I think that might be – it's probably more of just going for it on fourth down, which is cutting down the numbers on punt. As a man who does the protection drills, ball protection drills, what's the teaching moment with Dak there when he's – it's a great question. We see a lot of film of players that reach for the goal line one-handed, which we don't like. We see a lot of players that reach for the goal line two-handed, which is a competitive play where if it's fourth down, you've got to reach, ideally with two. And it was a fourth down play, and he, he had to reach for two. Uh, but defenses really are so good. And we show clips every Thursday in the, the team meeting, about an eight-minute you know, around the league takeaway tape of defense is getting really good at timing it up when that runner is reaching for that goal line in a really competitive situation. The defensive guys are going for one last kind of Hail Mary stab at knocking the football out. Um, and so what happened last night to Dak is actually very common. It was a great play by, by them. And um, it seemed like he was right on that line. I don't know. I, <laughs> I'm biased, I know. But um, I, to answer your question, I think if it was first or second down, we'd probably be against reaching for the goal line. But on fourth down, whether it's line to gain or goal line, you got you to gotta compete and, and reach the football for the, for the line to gain or goal line. When you talk about how great yesterday's game was, do you appreciate it in the moment, or is it after the game where it kind of sets in for you? There's, there's some games like yesterday, I was in the moment thinking, like, this is a great game. <laughs> Just being a part of it, you know, you look around and it's, you know, it's dark, but the lights are on, and the, the entire stadium, all the fans were standing pretty much the whole game, and the back and forth, and the competition, and you know, the penalties, and the ebbs and flows. It was like four games in one. Um, a lot of times, you reflect after the game, like that was a pretty good game. But there's been a few games I've been in where I've been in it, like Man, this is a great football game. This is just a great football game. How lucky am I, or are we, to to be standing on the sideline, actually being a part of it and having something to do with it? But that was. You know, I'd say the same thing. If we came away with the with the loss, I, I would have thought that was a great football game. You know, I'm sure, I'm sure glad we won, but that was that was a great football game. On a related hey, note, uh, Go ahead. Oh, sorry, uh, fans and sometimes even players are famous for like not being able to watch big pressure kicks, turning away, whatever. Uh, does your expertise in that area make that any easier? Or you know, when Greg is out there for a kick like that, what what is that like for you? It's it's pretty. Um, Pretty awesome, you know, to be. I usually crowd the sideline as much as I can, and I move back just a little bit, just so I'm not in the referee's, you know, sideline. But um, to be on the sideline and to watch those kicks, I mean, I'm eyeballing really who we're IDing in protection. So it's not just a moment where I'm just sitting back there as a fan, kind of looking at. It. I'm looking at how are we protecting versus the guys we've ID'd in protection. Um, but I've been on the sideline for a couple of kicks. You know, Greg's a couple of years ago in the NFC Championship game. Um, the Charger won this year. There's been quite a few of them where you're on the sideline, like, man, this is what an opportunity, what a huge moment. Come on, Greg, you know, nail this. And, and then, hey, right side, man, take care of 29. And it all happens so fast. And you're like, it's just um, it's really cool. You know, because I think hopefully everybody knows that, you know, we're coaches and we're players, but we're also fans. So to just be part of all football games, but special ones like last night is um, pretty, pretty good honor. Fans had some varying opinions when you said after week two that you were giving them what they wanted, being aggressive, trying to block the punt. 
Did you feel like you kind of were giving them what you what they wanted yesterday? Yeah, no. <laughs> I was stupid when I said a couple weeks ago, but, um, but yeah, every, every call is its own. Um, like I said just a little bit ago, it's, they're all calculated, and I like to think that they're for a very particular reason and attacking a very particular spot, not just throwing something out there and just being, oh, let's see what, you know. Um, but I was really happy for Giff. He's worked really hard. Um, he got an assist with a couple other guys. I won't talk about it schematically, but um, everybody kind of sets everybody else up. So it was really a, a team thing, and Gift made a heck of a play. Um, and it's pretty awesome. Had he, well, had he blocked one like that in practice before? I mean, how close to that have you gotten in practice before? Uh, you do, in practice, you don't really block kicks. You know, you kind of you work on your get off and you work on, you know, knocking arms down and kind of twisting and turning. Um, but when it comes live game, I mean, the way he blocked it was, I mean, really clinic tape. I mean, he put his eyes right at the foot. He put his hands right out there. But to be honest, with you, we don't really practice that because um, it's so rare that, you know, we spend time on other things. So for him to do that was just a, a great show of an instinctive football player who happened to, you know, smell an opportunity and he went for it. and. Um, he used a technique that you'd like to think is clinic and teaching, but really, honestly, it's not. He just he got home and um, he went for it, and very proud of him for it because he's been he's been through a lot. You know, he's been injured a couple of times in his career. He's been deactivated quite a few times last year, and he was this first game. He's the guy that just keeps overcoming, and you can count on him. And when he's in there, you feel like you got a better chance to win with him in the game. It's, it's often said that. There's a fraternity that exists between NFL specialists, between other kickers and punters and wrestlers and so forth around the league. Does that exist too for special teams coaches and, and coordinators? And if so, do you have any thoughts when you see Rich Pisaccia, someone who's been a long time special teams coach in the league, get an opportunity to be a head coach and then get a win uh, as he did on Sunday? Yeah, no, it's a great question. I think special teams coaches have a really unique fraternity that. Um, that is pretty cool for the fact, let's say, oh, offensive line coaches, you know, they have a really cool fraternity too, but offensive line coaches don't compete against each other. They compete against defensive line guys. So the unique thing about special teams coaches is the fraternity is really tight, but we actually compete against each other, you know, like on, on game days. And when you see, and you know, I texted um, Coach Basaccia that night that he was um, named the interim and just said, you know, Good luck, coach. Kick ass, man. We're all rooting for you. Because <laughs> all the special teams coaches are always rooting for the special teams coaches who get an in interim opportunity. Um, so it is, it's, a unique, um, it's a unique bond or fraternity because you compete against each other. You know, in the off season, how you doing, man? Great to see you. You know, we all go out to dinner at the combine. But then on game day, it's, it's, a, it's all right. Now it's, now, now it's game on, man. <laughs> so. Yeah. You've, been, yeah, you've, you've been in that position as an interim, um, and I, I was just curious, do you feel like that, uh, I don't know, an underrepresented uh, pool of head coach talent in this league, given how special team coaches have to address you know, a full room and really touch every level of the locker room with their presentation? Yeah, you're asking a biased guy. I think there's a, a great untapped pool of you know potential possibly head coach candidates, at least to get interviewed, because you do, you, you know, your, your relationships are with the whole team. Um, you dress a team a lot, you know, you're, you're dealing with the 48 and the 53 all the time, the game management part of it, you're always in tune with. Um, and when I had the opportunity, you know, it was, it was a really cool experience. And whenever it seems like there's something that happens during the season, the special teams coach is the guy that they, they go to to be the interim, you know, then after the season, then obviously that changes, but, um, I hope Coach Basachi does great, man. He's a great guy. I know he was here for quite a few years, and he just does a great job, so I'm rooting for the Raiders. Which part of Last one. transitioning from special teams coach to interim coach surprised you most at that time? And what would, I know you texted him, but what would you tell someone going through that transition to be aware of or be ready for? Whew, that's a good one. That's a good question. Um, I, don't, I don't know if there's much more, honestly. I think you just keep being yourself. And I mean, you talk to the team all the time anyways. Um, I don't think there's a big transition, you know, other than you, you, you got to put your hands a little more on the offense and defense. But you're kind of doing that anyways. Just, you know, he's not calm plays. So I think just being yourself, 
uh, getting team meetings prepared and run and you know keeping it simple and letting them roll. Kind of the special teams way anyways. <laughs> Thanks guys. Thanks, Johnny. All right. Thanks, Thanks you guys.